Hoorah! Hello, it's Zach here, and welcome back to my channel, and, uh, yeah, that happened. <laughs> and I'm not gonna lie, like, my thumbnail really is still stained. Like, it's not black, but it's, like, gray slightly. It just, it, it looks bad. I mean, I only, I only open, like, a new bottle of ink, like, once every two years, apparently, because the last time I opened up a bottle of ink was in 2016 for Inktober. So it's been a long time that I've been using the same bottle of ink, and my goodness... Oh, it's so smooth. Because, you know, if you use it all the time, it's slow. the bottle of ink slowly dries out, your nibs for your dip pen start deteriorating, but it happens really slowly, and so you don't really notice. And then all of a sudden I got, I opened a new, brand new bottle of ink and I switched out my nib for a different nib. It's not my favorite dip pen nib because that one is dead and I need a new one, but I'm using a different one and that I haven't really used before and just paired together was like, oh, this is what I've been missing. Especially because like I have this thing, like I, I, I can't waste. <laughs> The ink, I don't know why. Like the ball, one ball of ink is only like a few dollars. I I think I've stretched those dollars considering I've been using the same ball of ink for over two years. But I'm still like, oh, there, there's still more in there. I don't need a new bottle yet. <laughs> I can still use it. Oh, uh, but uh, eventually I was just like, no, it's it's too clogged. It's too dried out. I need to open up a new bottle. So. But enough about that, let's get to the main point of this video. So this video is um, a watercolor and ink illustration. Uh, but in particular, I did this illustration because I wanted to test out a new ink, not my black India ink, because I already know and love that ink, but I wanted to test out some Dr. P.H. Martin's iridescent um, copper plate gold colored ink. Ooh, that's a mouthful. But yeah, it's just some iridescent, uh, aka shiny ink. It's uh, a metallic gold kind of color. And uh, I've seen illustrations of people use m metallic ink and it just looks so cool. So I uh, found this ball of ink at the, the craft store and I was like, ooh, let me give it a shot. I actually got it some time ago. Um, but I never got it got around to actually making an illustration with it and I really tested it out So this was the illustration where I tested it out But first of course I did the pencil sketch then I did the line work with my beloved Dip pen and black India ink. Oh how I have missed that so much Then I did the watercolor and some other ink and then the gold the gold touch is really more at the end so and by the way, if my voice sounds a little bit strange, it's because I'm uh, a little bit sick, so I've kind of lost my voice a little bit, um, but uh, yeah, bear with me. So at this stage, you can see me doing a whole lot of detail in the hair, cross-hatching and so forth, and that wasn't what I was planning on doing originally, but just... The nostalgia of a brand new bottle of ink and the smoothness of it and just how much I have missed using dip pens with India ink, uh, I just kind of was like, no, I, I, kinda, I kinda keep using it. So I ended up putting a lot of detail and a lot of uh, cross-hatching and stuff in the hair and in the overall illustration, which kind of gets covered up. You can really not see it that much in the finished illustration because I made the hair really dark with uh, the ink and the watercolors. Um, and that was kind of just what I was planning to do originally, to not put a whole lot of lines in the in the illustration and mostly leave it up to the color, but I just couldn't help myself. Dip pens are too yummy. 
And then once that was done, I started with my watercolors. So I kind of realized that this was one of the first times that I did uh, this shade of skin with this water with watercolors. Like um, I have done darker skin before with my Copic markers, but not really with my my Koi watercolors. And I found it a little bit difficult to find the right colors because uh, I noticed that the darker colors for the Koi watercolors they're kind of like. I mean, I don't have experience much with other any other kind of watercolor, so I have nothing really to compare it to, but they're not as smooth, like they dry kind of chalky-like, and um, so it was kind of hard to get the right colors and make it look, you know, vibrant and smooth and stuff like that. So I ended up putting a lot of uh, different shades in there, not just brown, but red and purple. Um, to kind of add more depth of color into that. It was fun to paint uh, this type of skin because the darker the skin, the more contrast there is when it comes to the highlights. Like the highlights are very bright and the shadows are very dark and um, that's very different than if you have like a very pale skin. The pale skin, the shadows, the highlights aren't that different than the just an actual color of the skin. So. That also means though when it comes to uh, painting darker skin, it's a little bit less forgiving uh, if you make a mistake, if you put the shadows in the wrong areas. Um, so yeah, it's a little tricky, but it's also very interesting um, and fun to do. Then when it came to the hair, I used um, the Black India ink again, uh, just wet on wet technique, putting water down and letting the ink spread out everywhere. Usually I wouldn't use black in a color illustration because black tends to just kind of muddy down everything and it can really kill your painting. But uh, I'd say it ended up all right and I think that just maybe because I didn't use it as like a shading or I didn't mix it with other colors to try and make it darker like we all do when we first try mixing paints. You know, we always like, oh, I need a darker shade of green. I'll just add some black into that. No, don't do that. That is not how you uh, darken your colors. And also because it was kind of diluted with the water, it wasn't like pure black. It was just more like dark gray. So yeah, and then after that I started putting, um, I started using my Winsor & Newton inks which are colored. I have like all different kinds of colors of Winsor & Newton inks to put in the hair and in the background as you saw. There is something really interesting about colored inks. They are different than watercolors and especially in this illustration I got more experience with how they are different from watercolors because I was using both watercolors and ink. And you know, it's just really interesting how uh, the ink like it just stains it's like there's no pigment on top of the paper it just stains right through um, if you're a digital artist then I'd say like a close compare uh, comparison like the feeling I get from it when I use the colored Winsor Newton inks it's kind of like when you have your layer mode set to multiply and then you put colors over that that's kind of what it's like it just stains whatever color is already there and adds its own color to it. I think it's really interesting. Then once I was finished with my uh, Winsor & Newton inks, it was finally time to pull out that shiny Dr. B.H. Martin copper gold, wait, copper plate gold ink, yeah. Yay. So I had already planned to use this ink before uh, beforehand when I was originally sketching this drawing. That's why I left certain places white. As you saw, in particular, I wanted to make her lips gold and I gave her uh, like a nose uh, piercing, um, the rings on her hand, the fingernails on her hand, and that design in her headphones. Uh, which, by the way, I just kind of randomly came up with that design. I'll have to check if that design, if there's something similar like that online. Because after doing that, I was like, hey, that's a pretty cool Z. <laughs> like, for Zakira. Huh? Huh? Who knows? Maybe that'll become my new logo. <laughs> But afterwards, uh, after doing all the places that I originally planned to do the gold ink, I thought it looked kind of cool and... Uh, I kind of have this habit that I like once I start doing something I just want to keep doing and doing and doing <laughs> like you saw with my in the, the beginning of the video when I was doing all the uh, ink with the dip pen like once I get started with my dip pen I just can't put it down and it had a similar experience with this gold ink and that's why I made all these feathers 
uh, in her hair uh, in gold. I kind of already had uh, made these gold, not these gold, I had already kind of drawn feathers in her hair originally with the at the beginning of the video, you may have been able to tell. Um, but I wasn't necessarily planning on putting, like making them all totally gold like I ended up doing. Uh, I was thinking like, oh, maybe I'll just put like a little a little bit of gold here and there, but I just thought the gold ink looked so interesting, so I just kind of got carried away with it. Um, you can't even really tell because the camera is top down, so you can't really see it shining, but you'll see at the end of the video how it looks uh, when the light shines on it. But that was also, it was very interesting to paint with this ink because I was like constantly moving around my desk and leaning down and looking up and stuff like that so I could see how it looked from when the when the light shined on it. It was very interesting. I mean, if someone walked in on me while I was painting that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, after everything was finished and I let everything dry, I peeled off the tape, but... Uh, it wasn't a perfect peelage <laughs> because I this painting took me a long time I, I don't know exactly how long it was maybe I'll have a pop-up on the screen but um, it was taped down to the table for a long time and uh, masking tape kind of gets old uh, you know if it's stuck to something for too long it kind of just fuses to it so it kind of ripped the paper a little in certain places not only that but um, one thing I didn't realize that would happen was that the ink, the colored ink which I used for the background, uh, it, that ink bleeds, you know, it's not like watercolor which stays on the surface, it bleeds like I mentioned, so it kind of got under the tape and didn't leave a perfectly nice smooth uh, edge, but that was okay because I was planning on putting a black border anyway. But the black border ended up having to be a little, just a little thicker than I was originally planning in order to make it look all nice and neat. But all in all, I think I kind of managed to uh, cover up any rippages and bleed with the, uh, with the colors. So yeah, I think that the, the gold ink is very interesting. It's really fun to use. Uh, it creates a really cool, interesting look. I don't have any other uh, metallic ink to compare this one to, but I'd say that this Dr. P.H. Martin one is good, so yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video um, and this illustration. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Um, have you ever tried gold ink or metallic ink? If so, what brand did you try and uh, how did you like it and so on? I'd love to hear you guys' comments. If you did enjoy this video in any way, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. I make new videos every week, usually uploading on Sundays, but if things get in the way, then sometimes it'll be delayed, such as this video. <laughs> if you want to follow me on social media, all the links to that are in the description box where you can follow me for daily updates. And until next time, stay awesome, stay inspired, always. See ya! Mm -hmm.